there's a story about me as a young man. And as a young man, I would tell my mom, Mom, I'm sowing my wild oats. That's all. That's all. I'm just, I'm sowing wild oats. I'm, I'm doing it all and getting it all out of my system, right? Has anybody ever said that before? You're sowing your wild oats. I look back at that story now and my mom had reminded me about it uh, probably a year ago and it's been so long since I was that teenager living under her roof and man, what a difference in where I'm sitting right now versus my mindset, my processes back then and all about this whole sowing my wild oats and thinking that that was so cool. And today's scripture, uh, good morning by the way, my name is Pastor Jason and it is Tuesday, 747, your morning inspiration. Thank you guys for jumping on and joining with me. Today we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and like I was saying back in my teenage years, being a little off track with my thought process on being so cool to sow my wild oats, right? And today's reading Paul, Paul is talking to the Corinthians and they are a little bit off track and I want to dive into it. They were, uh, you know, just forgotten, forgotten generosity to catch you up to speed. Uh, Paul is doing this letter to the Corinthians. He's preparing them and Paul is going around to all of his churches and he's collecting money and he's doing this stuff because the saints in Jerusalem, they need help, right? And so all this hard work that Paul has poured into his churches, now he's coming back around and he's like, hey, We've got an opportunity on our hands to do some great things and we need to make sure that our hearts are in the right place and we're doing what we need to be doing. So this is his letter, getting the Corinthians back on track and making sure that their head is in the right spot, their heart is in the right spot. And we pick it up in chapter 9, verse 6. And uh, he, before verse 6, he uh, actually was saying, I know that you have zeal. And zeal was just one of those words that popped out to me and I looked it up and it means intense emotion, compelling action, passion, fever, uh, enthusiasm. These are all words that I very much enjoy reading and learning about. And Paul is saying, I know, Corinthians, I know that you've got this and that is a good thing. And let me just steer it because I've got some other people. I'm bragging on you guys and what you're doing and, and the grace of the Lord is upon you. And I've got these Macedonians. They are going to be coming with me too. I don't want them to show up on the scene and you guys not be ready. So this is, this is how you be ready, right? Let's dive in. Chapter 9, verse 6. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. What does that mean? What you put in is what you get out. If you do just a little bit, you're going to get just a little bit back. If you put in a whole bunch, you're going to get a ton back. That's just how it works, right? And uh, a lot of these people, they know what that means because it's crops, it's agriculture. Uh, in their day, they didn't have Burger King. They didn't have fast food. They needed to put a lot of work in to make sure that they had the food necessary for survival, right? And he goes on to say, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. I'm going to just pause right there and say, you, you get to decide. The Corinthians, they had a choice right there on their plate and Paul is breaking it down for them. And that's what we as we read the scripture and we dive in, that's what we get to do as well. And as you're taking it in, you get a decision today, today, this morning, the start of this Tuesday morning to decide. And uh, we continue. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen to that. Man, it gets intense when you're reading God's word. Amen. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Man. You know, again, I, it's, it's hitting me the emotions because of thinking about the teenage man that I was and the older man that I am now and just the grace of God upon my life. And I'm hoping that you can relate as well with your life story and what you were way back when without Jesus and what you are plugging into the word. Amen. All right, we're going to keep on diving in here. At verse 11, you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Remember, this is all about giving your best to help those in need. 
Paul is going to be taking this stuff to Jerusalem, blessing those in need. And you, the Corinthians, you get to be a part of this. So where's your heart? Check your heart. Let's get into it. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing into many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the gener generosity of your contribution for them and for all others why they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Man. Can you imagine getting this letter? Can you imagine checking your heart to be like, you know what? Yeah, it's all about the seeds. What kind of seeds am I producing today? What kind of seeds? I did bring some other seeds. What are we doing with this? What is our takeaway from reading the scripture? What are we uh, going to walk away with for today? What's today's promise? Seeds. Right? Lots and lots of seeds. What are we doing with the seeds that God has given us? He's blessed you with innate gifts. He's put it in you. And what are you going to do today with that? How are you going to speak a kind word over somebody today? How are you going to bless them by opening up the door and saying, have a great, wonderful afternoon? How are you going to pick up the check for somebody's lunch and just say, I hope that it was fantastic. We're breaking bread together. Seeds. Are we going to do just a little bit? Are we going to do lots Lots, 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 because God, God is the one. He abounds, he abounds, and he makes it more and more, more than we can ever fathom, right? And just to wrap it up here, as far as our takeaways and our action steps, when we're sowing these seeds, what does it produce? Sometimes we may never know. We might see it right off the bat with a, a smile or a warm greeting back, or, uh, hey, can you actually stop and pray with me? I'm going through this struggle. That's what seeds produce, right, guys? Beauty like we could never even fathom. Seeds produce this kind of stuff. And this is what Paul is trying to get across to the Corinthians. This is what I hope that you receive today, that it is beauty that only comes from the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The paradox of the cross, right? The Corinthians, they were having trouble with uh, thinking about these action superstars in, in uh people that were all about the money, people that were all about the pizzazz and they were having a hard time with Paul and because he wasn't an elegant speaker, he uh, worked for a living, he wasn't all about the, the flashy glitz and glamour, but he was teaching them something about the beauty of the cross, that Jesus came, Jesus died on the cross. He did it in a rough and tough way. It was the ultimate sacrifice providing for this new covenant, this new covenant that you are in today, I am in today, and those that know Christ Jesus as the Lord and Savior, we are all a part of the beauty of what God does. And now there's so many others out there, so many others that are in your sphere of influence that they need you. And that was the encouragement for today, to get out there, show the beauty of who Jesus is through you, through your story, Forget about sowing wild oats. We got bigger things to think about. We got bigger dreams to dream, bigger visions to cast. We've got the beauty of Jesus to share with those around us. So I pray that that is just an encouragement to you. I also just wanted to bless us with uh, Psalm 106, and it goes like this. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you doing that today? Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. No matter what's going on, how this day started, how your weekend was, what's going on, God's steadfast love endures forever through any situation. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord or declare his praise? I want to. I hope you want to. Blessed are those who observe justice and do righteousness at all times. It's so good to see you guys' comments and your names. Debbie, what's up? Chris, thank you guys for joining us today. I pray that this was an absolute encouragement to you as it was to me just being able to start my day out fresh, ready to go with God's word. Thank you, Paul, for writing to the Corinthians, for being open and honest and transparent and helping them to redirect themselves. It helped a young man like me thinking about those wild oats, and now I'm sowing the good stuff. And 
I'm grateful for it. So I pray that you are too. Let me say a blessing over you and let's take this day by the horns. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus, would your spirit bless my brothers and sisters, touch them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their toes. Would you fill them up fresh, new, your grace for today, your mercy for today, your joy, your enthusiasm, your zeal for today. Let us take away all that you've given us in your word and all that Paul has written to the Corinthians. Let us take it to our own hearts. Let us think big things. Let us dream big dreams. Let us be a part of your big vision and let us do what you need us to do in this day. Give us the opportunities to bless others. Give us the opportunities, the decisions to make that will be a blessing and will show who you are through us, through each one of our stories and may it impact this world. May it push and advance your kingdom for your kingdom ministry. And in the precious and powerful name of Jesus and all God's saints said, amen. Thank you guys. Have a very blessed day. Be praying for our pastors. They are in Greece. And uh, we just speak blessings over Pastor Rini and Christy that they would enjoy every single second. All the details, everything. Would they just have such a wonderful, such a blessed time. And we look forward to when they come back to hear all about it. Love you guys so much. Thank you for those amens. We will see you tomorrow at what time? You remember, 747. See you guys.